Hello, Photoshop Senior Edition folks. Guess what we have here? If we go to the Help and we go to About Photoshop CC, you'll see that this is 2015.1 release of Photoshop. So, yep, this is a whole different look when you go to log in. Some of your images that you've been working on will pop up here. It will give you a direct link to your libraries, to presets, uh, Adobe Stock, uh, Lightroom Photos to your mobile device. You see the, the stuff here. So it's don't be intimidated by it. It's just a splash screen. You can still go up to File Open if you want to and, and go that way. Or you can go to, to Bridge and browse for your files that way. Uh, I really like this because I can uh, see uh, a little bit of history right here. Uh, be reminded of what I worked on, how big the file is, the, you know, the particular date. Uh, and, or I can just go ahead and click on open. And um, I'm just going to click on this one. This is uh, what I changed my Facebook uh, image to as a background. And so you see when we get in here, it's not um, gigantically different. Uh, obvious differences are, are just not there. In this particular shot, uh, you can't see everything at first glance here. But if I move on down, you see the other stuff is still down here. So uh, don't be dismayed by my limited recording area that I have uh, so you can see the recording. Anyhow, uh, I did the usual. I did some masking in here. I did some cropping to, to put this on my uh, Facebook page. Uh, but there are some uh, nice changes in here and, and one of those is something I've lamented about uh, for, for a couple of years now uh, because Adobe instead of giving us more filters to work with and play with they took away one of the uh, most popular filters they ever introduced that being the oil paint filter well they put it back in this edition of Photoshop they found a way for it to work and play well with the rest of the Photoshop so if you go to filter down to stylize you now see oil paint and it's got a nice uh, dialogue to it that allows you could to uh, control how the paints going to look and act even the lighting angle uh, here will affect things let me just close this and I'm going to flatten this image so we can uh, go ahead and run that filter so I'm going to back to filter stylize oil paint and now you see the effects oil paint now I don't recommend that you turn preview on you're still seeing a preview of what's going on but if you turn that preview on it could slow down your machine depending on how robust your machine is uh, you can't really see uh, the effect over here so much as I move in the image you see in the preview uh, how the effect is is going but I would suggest to you that to really in the need to to have that on uh, <clears throat> you can make the um, brushes minimal obviously uh, or you can make them very very strong you can uh, clean them up to make them much more smooth or you can make them much more small scaling them this way uh, the detail in the brush no detail here much to speak of and then here you see a lot of detail again uh, we affect the lighting the direction of the line and how shiny it is and this used to be one of the things that people seem to have an issue with was uh, 
the amount of shininess they brought to the table. So what I recommend using this filter is to, if I wanted to run it on this entire image, I'd probably want to do a control J to make an exact copy of this layer, one that's totally unaffected, then go back to uh, oil paint and just let's just say we like I'll just put in a few numbers here and th this is random I uh, think the light was coming from basically over in this direction click OK you see it's gonna take a little bit to run and if we zoom in you can see the effect on the trees this is one of the coolest filters that I think Photoshop could ever imagine to come up with and be really really uh, neat now the reason I put that on its own layer and we can make this I'm gonna undo that take that filter right back off and I'm going to really uh, dramatically change it take that uh, all the way up take the clean off scale it way up brush detail let's take the brush detail way up as well uh, <clears throat> maybe a shine right around in there and click OK and now you see a lot more uh, has taken place on the entire image and, and you may say well I, I love what it did to the trees and maybe the side of the cabin or the barn but the roof looks a little weird the grass looks tormented uh, maybe I don't want so much of that uh, we'll say that the trees here in the foreground are okay uh, but what we can do now is come down here to the what I refer to as the square donut which is the mask and we can add this layer mask right onto the top one so now if we turn on a regular paintbrush we can push the letter B to turn on a regular paintbrush we want the top one then we go up to our brushes and we want something that's uh, the hardness is all the way to the left so it'd be zero hard ultra soft and we want something that's uh, fairly large so we can look in our image that's way too large and inside the image if we still aren't satisfied with the size we can use our right bracket key to make it larger left bracket key which is located by the letter P uh, we can make it smaller so that's handy dandy now the other thing is that we don't want to just take it and paint and then we have to paint with black and I can't see black right now because it's off the screen but if I press the letter D for default uh, we would have black and white now I don't know if you noticed or not but right up here now at the top of my layers palette popped the foreground color which is what it's going to paint with and paint, uh, painting with white does not hide and let the things below it show black does so if we press the letter X this changes to black which will negate this layer and let the layer underneath show through so I'm going to undo that with control Z and I'm going to paint with that mask but I'm going to lower the opacity down to around 30 is where I usually try to be when I do this and the nice thing is we can switch this right back to white to paint it back in switch back to black to paint it back out and so forth so we can go in here <clears throat> and tweak this again I like what's going on with the trees here but maybe not so much behind it so we can kind of fade that by painting apologize for that zoomed in on me or a little bit too far so we'll just kind of paint some of that back down 
and that. Paint over here. And we said that the grass was a little disturbing, so I'm just going over it and over it. And all this isn't uh, undoing anything, really. It's just masking what's on this layer and letting the, the original layer that looks like that show through. Uh, so we can control this as much as we want. We might want a little of that in there for texture, but not to overwhelm the whole image with the oil filter. And that's the way I've always used uh, the filters in Photoshop because, you know, some people are like, uh, if you've got it, uh, go all the way, you know. They want to print the biggest prints. They, they want to use the filters to the extreme and all that. Uh, sometimes minimal is much more poignant, much more effective. So I left bracket key to make my brush smaller so I can minimize the changes closer to the other elements I want to leave alone. Now the roof, again, I think the roof uh, looks a little odd, so I'm going to paint on it a little bit to bring back the original look. You don't have to get rid of all of it. Some of it might add a nice little texture, but I love the texture that's, that's on the wood itself. Again, if you want to, you know, change that and go down a little bit further and kind of paint some of that effect down. I totally understand that. I know some people, uh, they don't have that much patience. This is the way it looks normally. That's with a little bit of the, the painter, oil paint filter. We zoom back out you can see uh, and if we you know you decide I don't want this stuff at all I only want it out there then you just make your brush bigger with the right bracket key change this to a high number and just whack that don't go to a hundred percent because then it's just be abrasively gone compared to the rest of the image this still leaves a lot of, or a little bit of softness to some of it. So now we have the trees inside, a little of it on the roof, some on the barn. The trees are the thing that really uh, stand out there. We've got some of it back in here. Again, we can really tone that down. Or I'm going to undo that and just say I, do, I want to tone it down but not quite that fast. So then we do it that way. Paint that a little bit more. This all looks pretty good. But what if, what if I wanted to bring back a little bit of this right here in, in this little pasture area? Well, I can switch this color right here back to white by pressing the letter X and then look there you're just painting it all back in again with the oil filter because that's all that's on that layer is the oil filter effects we can go ahead and paint it all back in anywhere there's grass or anywhere else for that matter because the, the mask is allowing us to totally control where that filter falls so remember that you may have an image that just has a gigantic tree and that's the only place you want that oil filter to run is just on that tree well you can easily do that uh, just by controlling and I'm going to make that harsher make the brush a little bit smaller and again we're just going to have this big nice tree be the uh, only thing with the effect on it. So we get rid of all that stuff there, all this stuff here. So I'm painting with 79%. That doesn't completely kill all of it, 
it just leaves us with a smoother transition um, than 100% will. 100% will just all of a sudden there's a line of kind of a line of demarcation that there's nothing there and there's all kinds of stuff here. I'll leave this tree natural for comparison and now you can see the difference in the two trees. If I switch to X which paints the white back in I bring this tree right back to the oil filter look and if I pass it a couple of more times it brings it all back in. And you still see that the background only has flourishes of it and we can bring it all back or switch that to black and paint all of that stuff back out. So I think you can see the power that masks bring to this filter. This can be a very sweet uh, filter to use on some things, especially neat in, in a grassy type image or an image with a lot of trees, especially a bushy type tree. It works very, very nicely on. Uh, but I think if you experiment with this, uh, you, you may just find yourself uh, very satisfied. And, and, you know, if you play around with the uh, sliders that are in this tool, you're going to be uh, very happy too because, you know, all of the things that you can do with it, it's not limited to just... Uh, making things look different uh, it, it's you can change the light and really change the overall look and you see how it's affecting this right here the texture becomes quite different based on how these sliders are so if you try it one way uh, and you think well, maybe I don't really like that come back and, and try some of these sliders in a different place and see if that doesn't really make you happier. And see, we would really need to, in, in my humble opinion, it's looking much more painterly, uh, but for what I'm doing in this particular image, um, it's really going to need to be toned down. And we can also cut down the opacity of what's on that layer now let's look at what the tree here looks like so you can still see some of the filter we go down 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 and that's now back to the natural that's the way it looked in the beginning and that's the way it is all the way up so adding that extra light that comes with the filter really gives it that more painterly effect and we can very quickly uh, run that over the entire image to see what, oops, got to be on the right part of the layer there. Switch it back to white and bring all this stuff back so you can see what the entire effect looks like. So it's kind of hard, harsh now. Uh, but again, you can just control that mask and tone down the areas that you don't want it to be in. So let me zoom in again. And uh, if this were a smart object, which I did right here, you see I turned this, I turned that layer off and I copied this just as a regular photograph. And then I ran a smart object on it just did a right click and, and then told it to make it into a smart object convert to smart object so now if I go and run the filter on it notice well it's just that's yeah it's got some nice qualities to it let's just go with that click OK and once we do that Notice we now have a smart filter with a mask. So we can, and look at our image, kind of kind of cool there, right? Uh, we can now just double click that uh, oil paint 
and we aren't having to recreate it. We're just able to, on the fly, change the way this thing's going to look. Click OK, and now it looks like that. And say, oh, I don't really like that, so we just start over again. We put the scales back on there. Uh, lots of brush detail. And let's just really crank the light up and see. <clears throat> That's what we get there. Now we can paint with black. So I'm going to press X to get black. And now I can paint away some of that effect. That's too harsh. I'm going to tone that down to around 30. Smaller brush. And I'm going to say, oh, well, we want a little bit of that coinish look there. Maybe the same there, just a little bit. I'm going to leave that on that side of that building. Trees look awesome. The background, let's see, let's zoom out. background is really strange, so I'm going to tone that stuff way down. Create some depth in this all that back to its original state and then bring this over make it a little bit smaller and maybe tone this down a little bit down here let's zoom in a little bit so I think you can see that we can come up with some pretty good looking painterly work here We can leave as much as we want or take as much as we want of this back out. Kind of kill that back in the gaps a little bit will help to build some of that depth back into the image. Make this tree pop out a little bit more. Kill some of this up here. Just going closer to the tree to make it stand out a little bit. Alright, let's move that mask thing out of the way. Pretty neat, I think, of uh, what we can do with that particular filter. And that's just one of the things that we're able to do in the CC 2015.01 update. So if you haven't checked your Creative Cloud lately, you might want to go turn that thing on and see if you don't have an update available. Uh, Lightroom was also updated. Um, I believe Camera Raw and Adobe Bridge was updated. So take a quick look and uh, see what you think. Okay, now that we've done that, how about the toolbar? Because now it's customizable. Uh, we can, if you notice, the Band-Aid and, and several of these are now out here on the main toolbar. Uh, in previous versions, these were contained within uh, one tool. So if you want to use these like they default to, that's fine, but the bar, the toolbar now goes down quite a bit further on your screen. And some of these things you may not even want to use. So what you can do is go to edit and go down to, if you can't see it, let me move that down a little bit. Go to edit, toolbar. And it brings up this uh, particular box and it allows us to stack things back where they were if we want to uh, or eliminate basically now here I just here's the patch tool here's the healing brush tool I just took the healing brush and moved it into because they're all J I moved it into there so now when I go to the healing brush, those two will appear together. I'm going to do the same thing. 
with the content aware move tool because they were all a part of the same thing and I'm going to bring down the the uh, spot healing tool and combine those so then my Photoshop uh, toolbar is shrank sh is shrunk uh, now you can see the colors down here because it moved those up and now if I click right in here let's say I'm done there if I click here you'll now see that they're all three or all four can't talk or count combined into one group which is the way they were before and maybe you don't think that content aware should be in there with those uh, that's the nice thing about it you can make your Photoshop look the way you want it to look I'm gonna also combine uh, a few of these things down here so I'm gonna go back to edit and go down to toolbar and uh, I'm gonna just slide down here <clears throat> those are fine those three are fine I'm gonna move that in there too those three together are fine the path tool selections they're fine now look at there artboard tool done here so if I go up to the move tool now the artboard tool is there so we can set up you know do art projects on our uh, desktop now inside of Photoshop and that's right in there but if you want you could say go back to toolbar and say I don't want my artboard in there with the move tool so now the artboard is uh, here and the move tool is here and now you can you know keep working on on whatever you want to there get rid of those things that affect the artboard only and we're back to our original image uh, the artboard being separately uh, is okay with me uh, I won't use that a lot I see sometimes in my future I'm looking in that crystal ball I probably will use the artboard from time to time to lay out certain ideas so I'm not selling that short by any stretch as little as I will use that I'm going to go ahead and combine it I want to see the rest of the stuff that's in my toolbar very quickly and I think that's helpful to have that in there as a sub part of the move tool so as you look at the tools on the left hand side you're now able to see all of the tools uh, that are there now if you push the little thingy here that has the three dots there are lots of stuff there and this is the shortcut to edit the toolbar so it will bring this back up for you to work more conveniently off of here <clears throat> now I just hit the stack which basically has it in a normal view and it asked me if I wanted it full screen and and that's what I got so I can hit F again hopefully and get back so this this will kinda of make it spring out of the box clicking it into a full mode and uh, then you can view it better on your computer I think in that and then you can do the cancel or hit full screen which will make everything go black and then you can really look at your image and appreciate it I hit escape to get everything back uh, to its normal look and feel 
Let's do a control zero so I can see everything. You notice a while ago I cropped a bunch of my image off, so we're dealing with a quite different look to my image now. So if you're looking here, uh, you're seeing, let me get back to where my viewing area is here. There we go. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Here are the summary of enhancements for your uh, camera raw. So there are several things here uh, that you might be interested in. The links to these are on our main page, uh, the blog. But you see some of these were fixes. I also thought some of you might be interested in this. I'm going to just uh, turn on the old Content Aware Move Tool. And I'm going to go around this tree. And my tree is, I mean, my picture is so sawed off now that uh, it kind of makes this more difficult. But, you know, you can click on this now that we've got a selection and move the tree somewhere else, right? You knew that. Well, if I let go, perhaps you didn't know this part. It now has a bounding box on it which will allow me to transform this tree and make it whatever size I want it to be. So I can add it, say down here, double click it, it removes it from where it was and plants it over here and this area is replaced, you know, it's got something else replacing it. So you can take and move something let's just move it again but this time we won't transform it I just double clicked on it so now the tree is removed from there and placed over here at the same size okay so obviously there's a lot of other images that this would work better on but I think you get the idea that the transform is a nice touch. If we want to get rid of something, uh, we can. Let's take a look at this image maybe as a better example of that. Using the same uh, tool, Content Aware Move tool, we'll just get that shadow in it. And we'll go around here and make a general selection. truncated the shadow just a little bit there okay now well, let's take it over here now it doesn't do anything to that image yet but let's just say we want it here and I'm holding down the shift key to yeah, you don't really have to do you that's good I'll just put it like that double click it the other one is perfectly removed Control D and there's our shadow and our little tree put there and it's permanent part of the image I can't move it now as you see there's no additional uh, images or layers it's just strictly that tree so we can do a undo put it over here I'm going to double click it to just move it that's what it did before. Still does a good job of that. We've got the drop shadow that came with it. Or, like I said, we can bring it over and make it smaller, double click it. Control D to turn off the marching ants. And I think you have to admit it, it does a pretty doggone good job. Now we've got some uh, silliness right here and we can just turn on our uh, lasso tool here and make a nice selection one of the things that I've, I haven't preached very much on is once you make a selection like that right click on it and you have all of these other things that you can do I'm going to feather this 
and five is probably a, a pretty good uh, feather amount so the transition would certainly be softer and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say fill and then content aware fill click OK now it did a, a goofy job but if you've seen my other videos I'm going to shift and click to gather in a little bit more information I'm going to go back to fill again let's try a bigger area sometimes it needs more info not less fill getting better let's try getting more of the snow in it fill I know you can't see me click on the fill because it's off your recorded area but now we're getting something a little more interesting let's try fill there there we go we've changed the landscape but who's ever going to know that now we have a repetition that's built up here so we'll do a fill there you don't always have to go up and do an edit fill is the main thing so keep that in mind that there are a lot of things you can do simply by right clicking see there's the fill and we can also do an oil paint so what if we just did I haven't done this before so let's just see what happens and I'm going to right click in there and do a feather I'll we'll make this 10 just for grins and giggles I'm going to right click again and do an oil paint I have no idea what this is going to do I've never done that so it did an oil paint just on our looks like on our last settings based on our last settings just on the tree or the selection basically that that I created so if you had something in your image very uh, poignant something uh, maybe we could bring up something like a horse now these have the wires on them that's okay and I'm gonna do a let me see if I can't find uh, real quickly the horses without the wires like this image it's black and white but that doesn't really matter I'm going to do a rather loose selection I want to use that color or that uh, paint filter just on the horse and I can hold down my alt key to further tweak it go along there and and just kind of chop out extra stuff we don't need anything other than the horse to be painted so that's just distracting you can see this is one of my favorite ways of making selections you can't get all the nitty-gritty but you can certainly do a lot of nice stuff now I haven't gone in and set uh, my uh, mouse point so that's why you're seeing the the lasso with the pointy thing on there so I haven't gone in and fine-tuned this because I just got Photoshop up and running the new one myself uh, and I'll have to admit I had issues uh, my Adobe Cloud did not want to update I'm holding down the shift key to add that back in uh, my Adobe Cloud would not let me update so I spent hours trying to get mine updated and it still wouldn't do it so I had to get a hold of Adobe and they spent over two hours on the phone with me 
I had to give control over to them of my computer and watch them go in and try different things to to get it to update and it just would not do it I made that go away um, so they ended up having to uh, take my Photoshop completely out and put it back in again and then it worked but I'm telling you it, it was every bit of two hours that that they were on the phone if I got charged for that I would be crying uh, through to next Christmas sometime they were very friendly they were very helpful they were very patient uh, and I at one point the guy said he was getting ready to go home and I said well you've worked on this certainly a long time and he said well I'm I'm I've actually worked over my hours and there he was sticking with me I think he was probably in India is my guess where, is, where my help was coming from but he did a nice job and got me going and I was grateful because I wanted that oil paint filter back alright gang I'm not going to feather this make it a little bit bigger I'm just gonna right click inside and we've lost the oil paint <laughs> doesn't that bigger oh I think I know why uh, we're not on the right layer and oil paint there you go oil paint just on that particular horse that's awesome to be able to do that now that's not uh, where I would normally probably want the filter to be uh, so I would probably undo that and and make a copy of that layer just do a control J on on this layer right here and uh, then I would run it even better uh, I've got this created so let me let me try just doing a uh, I'm stuck in Neverland here. It's not letting me do anything. Apparently it's told me enough is enough. Is it's frozen? So I went back in and I uh, selected the, the horse again. And not very well on the nose, I might add. And I made this a smart object. I This copy of the horse Turn that off. This, co this copy of the horse is a smart object. I went right click, convert to smart object. So now, if I right click inside the bounding box or the uh, marching ants, go to oil paint, guess what? I can actually control all the stuff about the horse or the paint on the horse. So I can really. Uh, manipulate the way the filter is going to react on the horse and click OK and now we see the results so if I wanted at this point you see the mask right right here you, all, the only white part that's there is the horse so if I take and paint on this this is the mask I can paint with my regular brush and let's just change that so we can see it very quickly we can take away any part that we want to I'm going to undo that change the opacity way down and then just start painting some of that back away maybe we like that a little bit to bring out the details in trigger but we don't want it to dominate so much in the image now what do you think looking a lot cooler isn't it we can still keep painting that's all we're doing is filling black into that mask 
and bringing that down a little bit at a time if we wanted to and made that 100% it would just go back to normal let's just show you alright so we don't want to do that we, we want to just bring that back a little at a time so we can control real well how that's going to look get that on the nose a little bit more I think it's got a cool effect to it now if it was in color maybe even better but uh, I wanted you to see how powerful that oil filter can be especially using the smart object and layer mass you can really have a bundle of fun with it seriously now this is kind of a primer to build up a little bit of interest to maybe another Photoshop class for spring showing you some of those these things that are new in Photoshop because I would like to do a uh, Photoshop tips and tricks uh, session in the springtime maybe uh, eight weeks or so of that so looking at some of the new features in Photoshop I thought would be a fun primer for a course like that anyhow uh, right here on this horse uh, another new thing to think about is the filter gallery and not the oil paint this time but the ways in which we can go in and blur things that'd be through the blur gallery so there's several of these things that we can use to our benefit and we can control uh, the amount of blur in an image we can put it over uh, particular areas and blur them so forth and let's just uh, I'm gonna switch this to the iris blur and I'm gonna move this up here or I just turn that so you can see the effect that it has on things and I can actually click on this little box and pull it and it will turn into a square allowing me to pull this in an area like so which encompasses the horses and let's just bring that over a little bit more so we want the horses to be fine and dandy but we want the background to be a little more affected by it okay this is the other thing I wanted you to see is we have this new stuff over here now this isn't going to be uh, the best place to see bokeh uh, light bokeh and so forth that's that's not what we're going to go for here but noise is one of those things that makes the blur filter sometimes very unrealistic so I'm going to zoom in so you can see the effects of the blur okay and then we put some noise in you can see the noise there and then the size of the noise the roundness of the noise so forth the more crackle the uh, feel of the noise and again we can reduce the amount the, the benefit of this is uh, before when it blurred it just made everything so soft it wasn't realistic sometimes it, it was one of those things oh I see what they did they ran a blur here alright to me the <clears throat> most important thing we need to do if you look right here I made this a smart layer so if I right click on it uh, I can usually go to uh, smart new smart object convert to smart object and then uh, we can torture these images 
and never suffer any ill consequences as a result. So let me go back to the uh, blur filters and go to the iris blur again and let's just try the old uh, square routine here again or rectangle move this down and I'm going to crank up the blur pretty good move this around a little bit extend it some and again I'm going to bring some noise in there, this has got a little color in it but the background but doesn't really have a lot of color I'm going to change the highlight down let's go in and look at where this is really going to be uh, affecting and you see what it looks like okay it's updating let it get there we go so that's what it's going to look like right now I'm going to zoom back out with a control zero and I'm going to uh, bring this in a little bit more down a little bit more something more like that so I want that blur to be over all of it. I don't have to go quite that far with the blur. Alright, so now when I say OK, it takes it back into the regular Photoshop panel. You see the blur, but we also have a mask. And it shows right here that that mask color uh, or paint color is black. So if I turn on the brush and I come up to um, the horse's head change the slider and I can bring back the details on the horse without fear I, I got too much of the background in there but just wanted to give you the idea we don't have to have the horses feathered because they're in the foreground and make my brush smaller with the left bracket key and bring these ears back in and anything that's out I switch it to I press X to go to the foreground color which is white and I paint that back in around those edges and then we have the background looks good do a control zero and you see our horses are fine we could go over that a little bit more because I didn't make that a hundred percent still have a little bit of foggy haze over our poor deer let me get back here on the mask where it belongs switch it back to black get those details crisp we don't want the horse to look like it's blurred and you know around those edges you, you want to use a softer brush than I am I'm, this thing's a hundred percent rocking and rolling with uh, bring it back to if you take your time and soften it it uh, helps all right there we go again the noise is a big uh, deal if I double click on that to get back you see uh, what I did there I hope I clicked on the blur gallery right here took me right back into that blur tool and you see where the horses are how they got blurred why I had to use that mask and I can still make it you know even stronger blur click OK we come back over to our horses eventually and you see got a little ghosting going around it so you gotta you know be careful about that obviously that's an extreme um, amount of blurring 
that is really taken away from our image should be more something like that so the background isn't quite so distracting we don't want it over the top to look like fog is rolled in but I'm just really happy that we now have the ability to put noise back in and make that filtering uh, look real because we don't want uh, the image to look like it's just been smoothed out that's counterproductive all right that's really all I wanted to get into on the new features that I'm seeing in Photoshop for right now that I want to you know just kind of want to pique your interest a little bit so you could uh, see what's in there and what we can talk about down the road and hopefully look at a spring Photoshop session talk to you all later bye bye